as you can see, I've got my Witness Kiss novel here and I'm going to be looking at chapter one. The first time Whitney kissed a boy, it felt like a giant wave swept over her. She felt such a rush. She didn't know what to do or what to say. So she said nothing and just went along with it. She would never forget that day. It happened at an inter-school athletics event on a Wednesday afternoon, late in February. Whitney was 13 years old and in grade seven. On Valentine's Day, she had received a card from Lucky, a real hunk of a guy who was already in high school. Being 16 years old, he had said he was in grade 10, but she knew he was only in grade nine because her friend Lindiwe had an older sister named Zola who was in the same class as Lucky. Whitney did not mind this little lie from Lucky. He was always quite secretive and that attracted her to him. She knew, for example, that his real name wasn't Lucky, but he refused to tell her what it was. Everyone just knew him as Lucky. So she just dreamt about what his real name might be. And in her mind, she made up some names that she liked. She liked him. She hadn't told him yet. She would never admit that to him, but she liked him very much. She'd never liked guys before, but in the last year, something had changed inside of her. Maybe she was growing up, or maybe it was just because he liked her. He was clearly in love with her, and that made her feel special and beautiful. Maybe she was pretty after all. One day, she would be a beautiful woman, and every man would want her. She had seen Lucky almost every day since Valentine's Day, on her way to and from school. When she walked past her school, twice he had asked her if he could walk her home, but she explained that it would get her into trouble. Someone might see them and tell her mother, she speculated. Or worse, Mrs. Pillay might see them. Mrs. Pillay was Whitney's favorite teacher, and she would never want to disappoint her. Whitney had not told Lucky that she was also a little nervous. Mother had warned her against being alone with boys. She never explained why, but she was adamant that Whitney should not go somewhere alone with a guy. Whitney assumed that her mother wanted to protect her from tortsies, from guys who, had, who would do something bad to her. But Lucky was not like that. He seemed to be friendly and funny and charming. Yet the thought of being alone with Lucky both excited and scared her. She was somewhat nervous, but she longed to spend more time with him, longed to feel his arms around her. The athletics day finally offered a chance for them to be together. It was held at the sports field of Lucky's high school because Whitney's school, Timberletu Primary, did not have the proper facilities. Their only sports field was the dusty piece of ground with rather skew, homemade goalposts at either end. The humble soccer field doubled as the play playground during break times, so there was hardly a tuft of grass left on it. At Timberletu High, there was some grass on the field at least, and two pavilions overlooking the field from both sides. School had ended early, so the athletics could start at noon, and Lucky had arranged to meet her behind the main pavilion at two o'clock. When she finally managed to slip away from her friends, he was already waiting for her. His face lit up when he saw her. Come this way, he said in a hushed voice. I want to show you my secret place. More secrets, Whitney thought. But she said nothing and followed him away from the pavilion to a small building that looked like a storeroom. There was only one door on the side of the building. Broken sports equipment, Lucky explained as he took a key out of his pocket. Nobody ever comes here. How did you get a key? She asked in amazement and glanced around nervously. Simple. I had to get something for old Goofy, so I just, uh, just memorized the number of the key he gave me. Then I got the same key from the locksmith for five bucks. Easy cheesy. 
Who is old Goofy? She inquired. The athletics coach. The athletics coach. Everyone just calls him Goofy because, well, you can guess why. He flicked a light switch and she followed him inside. She noticed all sorts of old equipment lying around. Broken hurdles, punctured soccer balls and a pile of torn gym mats. Whitney had butterflies in her stomach from being excited and from being nervy. She wasn't quite sure what to do or say next. What's wrong? You look so tense. Don't you want to be with me? Lucky looked at her over his shoulder as he pushed the door shut. I, I want to, it's just that, uh, w w what if someone comes in and finds us? There's nothing to be scared of. Finally, we can be alone together. That's what you want, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be here now, he said as he took her hand, pulled her closer. Yes, but shh, put his finger over his lips. Just relax. Remember, I love you. Whitney's stomach was turning now and her breathing became faster. What did he have in mind? She so badly wanted to be kissed. She'd never kissed a boy before. And Lucky was so good looking, so popular. She loved being seen by him, being wanted by him. She said nothing and waited for his next move. He bent his head toward her, touched her lips with his, and she felt his breath on her cheek. She could smell the scent of his deodorant. For a moment, she held her breath. Could this really be happening? She'd never felt like this before. It felt as if she was floating. She hardly noticed it when he pushed her over and she fell on the pile of gym mats. They'd laid on their sides facing each other. The kiss had not been broken. She could feel his, his arms around her. Her heart was beating out of control. She kept her eyes closed and soaked up the affection. She was curious now. What would the kiss lead to? What, it, what would it feel like if I touched him? What if he started exploring me? Would she stop him? She'd never experienced this before. Was this even right? Her thoughts and emotions were racing faster than her heartbeat. Maybe she wasn't ready for all this. Maybe it was just too much, too fast, too soon. Still, she said nothing. Suddenly, there was a click and the door swung open. Whitney gasped and got up in a flash. Lucky was still half lying, half sitting, when Mrs. Pillay, Mrs. Pillay's gaze filled the room. What is going on in here? Mrs. Pillay looked at Whitney, then at Lucky, then back at Whitney. Whitney, not you. What is this? She asked sternly, clearly surprised. Her voice sounded nothing like the friendly, welcoming voice she talks with in English class. Yet Whitney could see the concern in her teacher's eyes. Yes, ma'am, nothing, ma'am. I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am, she said quietly, her hands trying to straighten out her dress. She never thought one could turn from being so hot to so cold in an instant. We were um, just fetching some hurdles, Lucky began, but Mrs. Pillay cut him short. Don't lie to me, young man. These hurdles are broken and this storeroom is out of bounds for students. Are you taking advantage of this girl? What were you two up to? Never, ma'am. We, we're just friends and we didn't do anything. Lucky stuttered and looked down to the ground. Whitney didn't know where to look and quietly wished the earth would swallow her up at that very moment. She'd gone from hot to cold, and now she felt so hot again. She wondered if Mrs. Pillay would notice her glowing with shame. This was so embarrassing. Right, that's the end of chapter one. In our next video, we'll be looking at chapter two.